Watercolours are made up of brush strokes. There are small ones, rounded ones, linear ones, specific shapes, brush strokes that make form. And then there's negative brush strokes, and of course, brush strokes that give life. What makes a watercolour interesting has less to do with the subject and lots to do with the way the paint is laid down. Think of the artists you admire. It's not the subjects they paint, it's the way they use their brushes and their pigment. That's what you love. These brushes are made for you. They are very versatile and they will do anything you ask of them. I'm an advocate of sable brushes. They have a fine tip and a full body, which enables you to make any brush stroke you want. First, how do you choose your brush? When you go to a good art shop, there should be a pot of water beside the brush stand. Dip it in the water and then flick it out, but make sure you don't flick the person next to you. And if it forms naturally a good point, it's a good brush. If it divides into two points, put it back and choose another one. Most people tend to favour a small brush, but just because you're doing a small painting, it doesn't mean that you need a small brush. The design of the sable is such that you can paint very fine detail with a big brush. So let's take this lovely size 10, and I'm going to show you just how versatile it is. Paint some leaves and some flower shapes. Let's pick a nice, simple leaf shape like the leaf of the stargazer. Let's mix up some Prussian blue and some raw umber. Always mix a good solution of colour. There's nothing worse than not having enough pigment to make your brush stroke. Now let's make this wonderful shape. I'm going to show you, I just love these brushes. Let's go down with the tip, down with the body, up to the tip again. And look, there you've got a leaf shape. Go the other way, tip down, tip up. There you have a leaf shape. You see, the brush does it. You don't have to do anything. This brush will create the shape for you. Look at that. Even your stems, your turned leaves. This brush is just made to paint. But not all leaves are one brush stroke wide. What about these more complicated leaves over here? These are going to require several brush strokes joined together. Oh, actually, and that nice red one. We can use the same combination of colours, the raw umber and the Prussian blue. This is where I do not want any outlines. Let me show you what I mean. Supposing I were to do an outline of this leaf. and fill that in. It's not going to look as nice as if you use that brush stroke and the tip of the brush stroke to create the quite complicated shape that this leaf is. Do you see how the brush strokes joined up make a much more interesting brush stroke than the one where we just did an outline? Let's add a bit of aureole into this mixture now. We can go from the tip first rather than the body first and then tip last. You see how you can use the brush in any direction to help you get the convenience on your hand. When you're painting you can't keep twisting and turning the paper but you can keep twisting and turning the brush and then you also might want to bring a bit of darkness into that leaf and you can also do that at the same time and let it just run so that your leaves have life. Let's try a red leaf, these beautiful bright red leaves. I'm going to use the size 12 now. And the colour changes as the leaf comes down towards the stem, becomes yellower. So we can just run that colour in while it's wet. And then back to red, 
There's even some lovely alizarin crimson in there as autumn takes its toll. Let's try the flowers now. Let's take this calla lily. It's made for a brush stroke. Look at that curve. I'm going to start with some Indian yellow because the colour down by the stem is yellow and I'm going to run the alizarin into it. So let's start with that lovely shape. Look, it's just made for the sable brush. And then load the brush with the alizarin crimson quite a lot because it's quite a strong colour. And then come in from that point and just let it run down into the yellow and then bring up some bit of green for the stem. Let it all run together. That beautiful shape of the calla lily. And that's all just the brush stroke. What about the purple of the lisianthus? Now that's a different brush stroke because it's, it's a flatter shape, it's a wider shape. Again, load that brush, fill that body, fill that tip. And then just use your brush. It's basically drawing the whole shape using the tip to draw the outline and the body to draw the body of the flower. So that you've actually created the whole shape with the one brush stroke and then bring down the bottom of the petals into that stem. Letting that dark colour flood in while the wash is still wet. Okay, we've looked at organic shapes, flowers, leaves. We don't have to be too accurate with those, do we? Because we can allow the brush a little bit of licence. What about much more specific shapes? Say a bird on the wing, that's a very specific shape. I've already painted the wash, so it's dry already. And now I just want to mix up a little bit of ultramarine blue and let's have some burnt sienna. And now let's paint this flight of birds flying across the page, just using the tip of the brush, pressing it down a bit to make the wing. I'm gonna use the size four brush, which is actually the smallest that I have in my brush set. And I just want you to watch the tip of the brush and how it makes the shape of the bird. I'm not drawing a bird, I'm drawing the shape, a shape of colored tone. Now, do you see that because the brush stroke itself is so lovely, if just let alone, you don't have to be absolutely perfect in your bird shapes. Because once you have the whole combination of these little marks together, they can't help but look like a flock of birds flying. The secret is not to keep going over and over them, but to let the brush stroke lay in the place you first put it. So do you see, there's very simple brush strokes and they're not highly accurate, but they look like a flock of birds. Now I'm going to take a bigger brush, a size eight, and paint the detail of this stalk, which has a very narrow beak and very narrow legs, but a wide body. And that's where the beauty of the fine point and the larger body of a bigger brush comes in. Starting off with quite a light tone to get the shape of the bird. See how I'm pressing down the brush stroke now, right, almost right down to the ferrule. And then I can create a little bit more intense paint and bring the legs in one brush stroke out of the body of the bird. And it's the brush stroke itself that has given you that life. It's so fresh and so easy if you just let the brush do the work. Let's come to trees. Nebulous blobs will not describe a shape. I've seen lots and lots of trees painted like this. Now true trees are made up of a lot of little leaves, but watercolours like shape. If you're going to paint a line of trees, this line of trees on the horizon here, you look at the overall shape of the tree rather than paint lots of little blobs to represent the leaves. Mix my green. I'm using raw umber and Prussian blue again. And coming from the left hand side of the picture, I use the tip of the point to create the poplar shape. Do you see how the brush itself is making the shape? I don't even have to think 
about drawing it, it's making the leaf shape and the hedgerow going away over this way to the left. Slight change of colour to bring the next tree in, leaving gaps between the brush strokes to just represent the sky. And you see that it's just the brush that's doing the work. I only have to put it down more or less in position and the brush would make a much nicer mark than if I tried to fill in an outline. And we can still just blob in the darks underneath to let them run in to the wet washes.